Ladies and gentlemen, Jim Keller has provided some fascinating insights into performance projections of AMD's upcoming Zen 5 processors. And this is most notable because Jim himself had a hand in the early designs of Zen. And furthermore, many of the engineers who formerly worked at AMD are now actually at Tens Torrent, a company he is helping to head. Now, very interestingly, um, there was, of course, news that Intel's GPU chief, Rock Raja Kodori, had actually quit the company and has now actually joined as a director of Tenstorrent. So Tenstorrent, if you're unfamiliar with the company, are basically designing AI processors for machine learning. AI, of course, has become, well, let's just say a pretty big industry, and that's putting it somewhat mildly. Now, there was a very, very lengthy video that was actually uploaded on the official channel. It's well over seven hours long. It's like seven and a half hours or something like that. But there was a very intriguing slide. And this slide basically provided a spec integer performance of numerous processors. So we have Amazon Graviton. We have some Intel stuff and also Grace projected performance, as well as a crap ton, that's a technical term, of various AMD processors. And perhaps the most intriguing one, of course, is Zen 5. Now, the TLDR here is that if we look at the performance projections of the integer results, we're looking at essentially 30% improvement over the previous Zen 4 generation. What I'll also add is if you look at the frequency, you can see that there's a small uptick in frequency. However, power usage is basically the same. So judging from these figures, Zen 5 is shaping up to be extremely impressive. But I do want to provide a little bit of additional context, namely... Jim Keller here is referring to integer performance. Now, of course, it's possible that his figures are incorrect, but I think it's quite likely that they are within the ballpark of what AMD are aiming for. But even, let's assume that that information is correct, it doesn't necessarily pertain to all workloads because different workloads will, of course, stress the processor in different ways. Going back to my own information, I think with single thread performance, I've heard around 20 to 30%, with an average being somewhere between 20 to 25% from my sources. Now, of course, at the end of the day, these CPUs have not launched yet. So calling exact performance figures on a product that hasn't even been released is quite difficult. And again, given different workloads will push the processor in different ways anyway, even if you hear a specific figure, you have to ask yourself, what workload were they testing this processor all this hardware in and was it let's say multi-thread was it single thread with all of that said though i do think that zen 5 will be extremely impressive i think that it's ground up redesign and i think amd are pushing the performance figures up as high as possible because quite frankly i think that intel are going to be coming out swinging with their own architectures over the next few generations now this actually matches some of my own information that I'd leaked not too long ago. I actually have a video of it on the channel. Um, I basically stated in one slide that clock frequencies are very similar to Zen 4, but obviously things could change a little bit. IPC gains I'd heard were somewhere between 20 to 30%. Um, it seems that basically integer performance is actually much higher versus let's say fp so i think the lower side of the ipc gains are probably more like a mixed workload judging from what jim is saying here and 30 percent is probably more integer related stuff but of course these results here that uh, jim keller is referencing actually result as uh, they are actually revolving around data centers these are not you know am5 or should we call it Granite Ridge, which is for the Ryzen desktop. Although it does give us some idea if you do some extrapolation of what you can expect for, what is it going to be, like Ryzen 8000 or something like that. You can check out my previous video if you want more details of what I've personally heard. But just to give you a brief overview, there are a bunch of new improvements for the CPUs, of course. I've heard that there's new CPU instructions, including FP16 AVX512. Um, there's going to be larger caches, especially on L1. TSMC will be providing the, um, well, basically the nodes, of course. 4NM for desktop and um, 3NM for server, although there is some crossover. For example, some APUs will be utilizing both 3NM and 4NM, depending on the tier of the product there's going to be also some other changes i've heard that there were going to be wider decoders for example so improvements essentially especially for integer 
Generally speaking, though, I think that Zen 5, as AMD themselves have kind of hinted at in the slide, is going to be a pretty big redesign in terms of its architecture. For what it's worth, I've also mentioned in a previous video as well that Zen 6 doesn't seem to be quite that. It's basically um, Zen 4 again. So what I mean by that is, of course, there will be some small IPC gains here or there, but the early information, the preliminary info that I've been receiving regarding Zen 6 anyway, is that instead it's going to focus on clock frequency, efficiency, and so on and so on. So my guess regarding Jim Keller's insight, and I'm putting words into his mouth here, at the end of the day, I do not know how much insight he actually has for certain, but I'm probably going to say that he probably has a better idea than, you know, I do. Just just be honest. Um, not only because he has, well, let's just say, a close association with the industry. <laughs> um, he has also, of course, literally worked for Intel as well as AMD. He knows a lot of the engineers, a lot of the engineers. Well, basically, the, you know, these companies, once a project is over with or whatever, you know, Bob or whomever is like, well, you know, I've worked on their memory system or whatever, or I'm bored or I want, you know, I'm, I'm moving or I want to work on a different project or whatever. And of course, you know, this kind of churn happens all of the time in the industry. So my guess is that he probably has a very good insight into the performance of them fives he could totally be out of course for all we know the ipc gains in integer could be like one percent but again i probably would assume that he has very good information before i close out the video i just want to quickly highlight something regarding the rtx 4070 nvidia have somewhat confirmed it well I was going to say by accident, but I really do not think that this was by accident. As most of you know, Counter-Strike 2 has been formally announced. It looked pretty cool. Honestly, it's not something that I'm personally going to play. I played CS a lot back in the day, but now I just don't really play competitively or, any, well, basically any uh, multiplayer games. I just focus on single player. But, obviously, with Counter-Strike, you know, well, latency is a really big deal. And NVIDIA's Reflex, of course, is going to be included in Counter-Strike, and it is in many competitive titles. So, a slide was actually released by NVIDIA, and you could see at the bottom the GTX 1060, the middle the RTX 3060, and at the top is the RTX 4070. And we can also notice, of course, up to 35% latency reduction with Reflex on. And you can see that basically 2 milliseconds have been shaved off. There's not really a whole lot to say about this. We've already had the specifications of the RTX 4070 confirmed at this point. We've spoken about the um, performance multiple times. Um, again, nothing has changed since my earliest leaks with the performance being roughly on par with the RTX 3080. The price, you know, my earliest information of $599 seems to be on tr on track. Um, Videocards.com have since confirmed that. And the release date for this thing is the 13th of April. If it really is available at $599, and I say this without having the benefit of testing the card, it's not terrible. Um, it's not awful. It, you know, it's... I would, I would consider this release tolerable. Um, it's honestly more expensive than what I personally would have liked the card to have been released at, but there we go. Anyway, I just wanted to mention that in this video because, of course, we've been extensively covering the RTX 4070 leaks, so I thought I might as well just throw this in. With that said, though, I'm going to let you guys go. I know it's been a shorter video today, and I'm also not on camera, but trying to organize some stuff in the background. You know, it's the holiday weekend and all of that stuff so kind of you know flitting around so this is a somewhat let's say uh, unprepared video with that said take care of yourselves have an amazing day bye for now